I woke up piloting the strongest starship, so I became a space mercenary. Written by Ryuto. 349 Pirate Countermeasures Meeting. The data storage devices you took from the pirate ships allowed us to pinpoint the location of their main base. It's located in this sector. It's in a spot opposite the Dauntless location, past this system's parent star. To be specific, it's in the outer edge of this system's asteroid belt, near one of the hyperlane nodes leading to an unexplored star system. Captain Serena indicated a spot on the star system map displayed on the hollow screen. I see. It's true that the Dauntless would find their location difficult to detect because the system's parent star and the asteroid belt were in the way. The location also made it fairly easy for the pirates to catch the movements of the exploration ships returning from the unexplored star system. I wasn't sure if their base was already located there from the start or if they built it in consideration of the Dauntless position. In any case, it was a well-thought-out location. Our scouts have already sent us the detailed coordinates of the base along with information about their equipment. It looks like they are already preparing to make their escape. Hence, we need to hurry up and subjugate them before they get away. Rear Admiral Esrebin's face was illuminated by the light of the hollow screen. M.M., he definitely looks the part of a handsome protagonist. I suppose you can say that he's giving off the charisma of a general. I see. We can sortie any time, but what about the rest of the force? The fighter squadron of the Dauntless can sortie at any time as well. Fortunately, our independent mobile anti-pirate fleet is just about ready for sortie as well. We had to deal with some things after finishing fleet maintenance and resupplying, but we're just about done with them. Some of the mercenaries are already out hunting, so we won't be able to assemble the entire combined force, but we'll be fine if the fighter squadron of the Dauntless participates in the operation. When Captain Serena commented about having to deal with some things, she briefly glanced toward me. I'm sorry, okay? I really didn't do it on purpose, you know? No. Then it looks like we need to launch as soon as possible and quickly destroy them. Considering the scale of our combined forces, I think we're fully capable of pushing all at once and crushing them with force. But if we want to prevent them from escaping, we'll have to split up. The independent anti-pirate mobile fleet will serve as the main force and will be tasked with attacking them head-on from the outer edge of the asteroid belt. Then, the mercenary ships and the Dauntless fighter squadron will spring an ambush from within the asteroid belt and hunt them down. The support ships equipped with gravity jammers will prevent them from retreating and keep them within the vicinity of the asteroid belt. After saying so, I operated the hollow screen and placed icons that visually indicated my plan of attacking the pirate base from two directions. It might be a bit dangerous to fight inside the asteroid belt if the Dauntless fighter squadron wasn't trained in such operations, but carrier-based fighters that were even smaller than small-class starships were basically designed to handle fighting in such environments and overwhelm enemies with numbers, so I think it'll be fine. It's a strategy that makes good use of the advantages of our combined force. Just why are you aware of the existence of the GJ? Come to think of it, the number of your ships seems to have increased by one, huh? huh. So, they really provided your fleet with that equipment, huh, Captain? It looks like my guess was right on the money. I said so and shrugged my shoulders. The use of the gravity jammer was tailored to specific situations, so I told Elma that they might get provided to Captain. Serena's fleet. After all, even if its use was limited to a few specific situations, the star system garrisons and the independent anti-pirate mobile fleet will surely find the gravity jammer extremely handy. If the jammer was deployed just as pirates initiate their attack on a civilian ship, it would be easier to catch or destroy them. We'll use Captain Hero's plan as a reference. We'll iron out the details ourselves. Aye, sir. We'll get ready to sortie then. Please do so. Needless to say, I know, I won't leak anything until the operation starts. I'm aware of that much, at least. Make sure to keep it to yourselves as well, you too. Of course. Yes, my lord. I turned my gaze toward Elma and Kugi, and they nodded in response.
Well, even if information about the operation leaks out, I don't think it'll have much effect on the situation. But it was still better to prevent any leaks in any case. Let's be careful. Oh right, what happened to that sphere you confiscated, Captain? We're keeping it under tight watch for the time being. We've also proceeded with interrogating and negotiating with the related party, but it isn't as urgent as dealing with the pirates. We've already secured the actual item. I hope a containment breach doesn't happen. I'm not sure why you're worried about that, but the item has remained dormant, and we've placed it within a shielded container. Even a Titan-class combat bot will find it impossible to break out. Sounds good. We'll be excusing ourselves then. I was internally questioning if everything was really fine, but I don't dare to blurt out my true thoughts. If I blurted it out and it ended up coming true, Captain, Serena will either faint due to stress or pull out her sword and try to cut me down. We obediently left the restricted block and returned to the Lotus. We don't exactly know when the operation will be announced, so we took no detours this time. We're back. Welcome back, Hirosama. That was rather quick, wasn't it? When we arrived back at the Lotus, we found Mimi and the Mechanic Sisters all staring at a tablet terminal inside the hangar. Were they checking the supplies or something? The talks proceeded quickly after all. We've been dealing with Captain Serena for quite some time now, and Rear Admiral Esterbin was also a pretty straightforward guy. So the yeah. discussions didn't take long. Let's start preparing to sortie. We could receive launch orders anytime now, so if there are still some supplies that will take time to get delivered, just pay for them first and have them get set aside first. That's quite sudden. But we're fine, boss. We didn't have that many supplies to replenish, so we'll be done soon. Are we going to subjugate the pirates? That's how it is. The data storage devices we retrieved proved really useful. I see. What about that sphere? It looks like they've temporarily put it aside. Since they've secured the item itself, it seems they're proceeding with questioning the involved party. The level of urgency dropped because they were able to quickly secure the item. That's true. Anyway, boss, what kind of conclusion is Captain Serena, I mean, for anyway? I have an inkling about her objective, but I'm not sure what kind of arrangements she'll opt for in order to achieve it. That's true. Tina and Whiska tilted their heads to the side. I also did the same. I still didn't have any idea about what kind of arrangements the captain will settle for. The best outcome is the military being able to freely process and manufacture the shells of those sphere creatures due to their excellent properties as armor material, but will captain. Serena's fleet that primarily hunts down pirates really be capable of achieving that goal. Her fleet basically specializes in hunting pirates, so I think they'll be out of their element when surveying and researching an unexplored star system. Well, the Restalius was a pretty big ship anyway. They should have enough space. If they put their mind to it, I think it's plenty possible for them to set up a temporary research area and housing research staff. Captain Serena will probably move on to that matter after the pirates are dealt with. It's a matter that doesn't have anything to do with us, so I don't think we'll need to worry about it, I hope. You know that's basically impossible, boss. We'll definitely get involved at some point. Right? I think so as well. Tina, Elma, Mimi, and Whiska immediately retorted. Only Kugi, who only met Captain Serena recently, tilted her head and displayed a puzzled expression. I really don't want to get involved, though. I mean, I already experienced landing on a planet in the middle of being terraformed previously. Now you're telling me I'd probably have to land on a mysterious and possibly dangerous unexplored plant with unknown, possibly fatal, surprises lurking about. We'd at least encounter those deadly metal sphere creatures. I absolutely don't want to go. Landing on a mysterious planet housing hostile alien creatures or killer robots was a common plot of action horror SF flicks. Anyway, Let's focus on discussing the countermeasures for the pirates first. The Black Lotus will most likely get assigned to direct bombardment duty from the front. 
The Krishna will probably be part of the force that will attack from the inner depths of the asteroid belt, and the antlion will be part of the force that will prevent the pirates from escaping. The antlion will probably get assigned with escorts and placed together with the anti-pirate fleet ships equipped with gravity jammers, but you still have to be especially careful, Elma. The chance of the Black Lotus or Krishna not being able to support you right away if you get yourself in a pinch is quite high. So make sure you don't overdo it. I know already. You're so overprotective, hero. Of course. The ship can get destroyed for all I care. But make sure you don't die. You can start over as much as you want as long as you're alive after all. Yeah, yeah. I understand. Safety first, right? I won't take any unnecessary risks, so don't worry. It's good that you understand. However, the antlion won't be able to earn much this time around, huh? I guess I'll negotiate for a special reward or something. Actually, our original concept can't be performed unless Krishna and antlion work in concert. But since the antlion will be using special equipment to perform a role that other ships won't be able to, asking for a little special reward was plenty reasonable. That sure was a quick double take, boss. Why the sudden change of heart? There's no such thing. I just don't want to sell the services of our skills and equipment for cheap. It's consistent with our usual policy. I also claimed compensation when they made use of you sisters' maintenance skills during an operation back then. Remember? Oh, that's true. Whiska displayed a faraway look when she remembered that time when they busied themselves repairing damaged mercenary ships in the middle of a great battle with crystal lifeforms. We didn't offer the sisters skills and the facilities of the Lotus for free back then and properly demanded payment. It's pretty much the same thing for the antlion. That's how it is, so please prepare for launch, guys. Our policy is to keep ourselves safe as always. All right? Aye, aye, sir. Most of the crew members replied together. Coogie being a bit late to respond was cute. Preparations, huh? I guess I'll check out my new ninja power armor. I don't think I'll get a chance to use it today, but I have a feeling I'd be needing it soon. Oh boy.